Hey guys, it's Ryan with My Listing Club. In this video, I wanted to do just a quick overview of a tool that I love to use. It's completely free and it's called Visual Studio Code. Now, you may be like me and um, in the beginning, you think that sounds really nerdy, really geeky, like that's just something I'm not gonna need, something I'm not gonna touch. But um, I really don't want you to be, uh, be thinking that way and be afraid of this application. Um, I'm not a developer. Um, uh, a full stack developer, I should say. Um, I do a, a lot of CSS writing on my own. Um, I can reverse engineer um, existing code and make it do certain things, uh, but I'm not a coder. Uh, I can't sit down and, and code a plugin from scratch. That's not what I do. Um, but this, the, what this application allows me to do is look at code um, in a beautiful format um, compare files, which I'm going to show you here in a second. That's one of the main reasons for this video. I'm going to show you how to compare two files um, so you can see the differences in those and, and why that's important for my listing. Um, but another thing you can do is it can just be your, your text editor, your text reader. So whenever you're looking at text files, um, but as you'll see in this video, Visual Studio Code does, um, I mean, tons and tons of um, work with different file extensions. Um, all of the P, all the languages of WordPress, PHP, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and so on and so forth. So it's just a really awesome tool. Again, it's free. Just go to um, code.visualstudio.com and download a copy, or just go to Google or whatever your browser is and do a search for Visual Studio Code, okay? Um, as you see here, you can download it for Windows by default, but you can also get it for the Mac OS or Linux, okay? So I've already got it on my Windows machine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this window down here, but you can see before I do that, you can see they've got a super extensive document library, uh, a blog, all kinds of things you can, where you can learn all about it. But again, the, my main thing here is that I just don't want you to be afraid and think it's just a coder's tool. It's it's not. Okay. So I'm going to close this down and pull this up on my computer. And here we are looking at it. Um, it's in dark mode um, for me. Uh, it's, like a lot of applications today, you can apply all kinds of different themes, light mode, dark mode, different types of dark mode, um, all kinds of different things. Uh, maybe you have specific accessibility needs. Um, you can alter all kinds of things to get the, the look and feel just however you like. Okay, um, so let's run through a couple things. Um, first, let's look at the, the file compare tool. So I'm gonna give you a really easy example and uh, then we'll, I'll look at a more complex. So let me open a file here. Let's open both of these. I think I can just drag and drop. So I'm just gonna drag a file in there and I'm gonna drag another file in here. Let's see. I never actually tried this, but it looks like you can drag a file. Let me try to drag another file in here. There we go. That's pretty cool. So I just drug uh, two files two separate files in here from my computer. That's pretty cool. Um, so another thing let's, let's talk, um, try to remind myself that what I'm gonna talk about is the find and research. Find and replace, that was another big thing to talk about. Okay. Um, so here on the left, we see this explorer thing. Let me right click on this and say reveal in explorer view. There we go. Uh, and this, I only, the reason, the only reason I had to do that was because I drug and dropped those files in there. If you were to open these files directly from Visual Studio Code or right click on a file from your computer and say open with and open in here, it would have already, those files would have already appeared here in what they call the explorer here. But because I drug and dropped them in there, I got to uh, assign them over to there. So anyway, I'm going to right click on each of these tabs for the file names and say reveal in explorer view. Okay, so here's the two files we see there, version one, version two. Version one we see, I just put some basic CSS in there, button, the color is white, so that would be the text color, and then the button over here, the color would be black, okay? So what I wanna do is compare these two files side by side and see what the differences are. So with version one checked, I'm gonna right click on it and say select for compare. And then I'm gonna right click on version two and I'm gonna say, Compare with selected, so compare with version one. Okay, uh, just by doing that, we see it. We see the difference. Um, so it's telling us on line two, which is highlighted here in red. 
Okay, that's where our change is. And what is that change? You know, it shows you the differences in those. All right. Um, let's look at a more complex example. So I'm going to, I've downloaded the latest version of my listing. Uh, at the time of this recording, it's 10, 2.10.4. And I'm going to go in here and edit a file that I know that I've had to edit here recently to fix an issue uh, with a theme update. Uh, let's see here, listing types, revisions. Okay, so I'm going to make a copy of this file. I'm going to drag it down to my computer here. Um, I'll go ahead and bring this over so you can um, see what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, so this is the file. I'm going to duplicate this file. So copy. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually move this back over and I'm going to drop in, I'm going to close these. So those were the simple, you can also right click and say, close all. Uh, so I'm going to drag these over again. So I'm going to do revisions. So this is the version that comes with the latest version of my listing. And now let's pretend, I'm going to rename this file. Um, In this window, I'm going to pull up, uh, let me, yeah, let's do that. So let's say on the left-hand side is the new version that comes with the parent theme of my listing. Okay. Whatever version that may be. And on the right, we've, we've added something to our child theme. And this is the file we've modified. Um, I'm just going to go in here and delete a bunch of stuff. So let's just delete, let's just delete those lines. Okay, and then we're gonna come down here and let's just change the wording of just, I don't know, let's change, put an S after admins, okay? Um, same same thing, but let's say, you, you know, you've had that file on the right in your child theme for a, you know, for years. Um, you go and you update the My Listing parent theme, which is the file on the left, and it, it, get, it gives you error messages and it says, hey, there's something wrong here. Um, so what you need to do, um, hopefully your developer can help you with it, with this if, if they're still around. If they're not, um, and you, you don't want to go and hire someone right away and you want to try to figure this out yourself, uh, I kind of frown against doing that unless you really know what you're doing, but if you really want to take a stab at it, this is how you would do that, okay? So you've got that error message in your WordPress dashboard that something is wrong with your My Listing file. It's going to tell you in the error message the exact path um, to the file that's got an issue, right? So now let's do a compare and see what changed from the parent file on the left to the file on the right, which is our child theme. So we're gonna do that same process, right click on the original file, select for compare, right click on the old file and say, compare with selected. So right off the bat, we see, okay, uh, this big red box, and that means that's showing us that um, it's missing. So we look right here. This is what's different, all of this in the red. And then we look over to the right and it's telling Visual Studio Code is saying, hey, this these lines are gone, they're missing, okay? Um, also looking at the bar over here on the far right, you know, we, follow, we can follow that um, as well. So if we do that, we start seeing that it scrolls down through there and we see another bit of red down here, see that? That tells us there's something else that's changed in there. So if we um, keep scrolling down till we find that, so it's somewhere in there, and okay, here and here it is. So we've got another line here. What's changed? So you just compare these two lines. Um, you just got to look at them closely, and we see that the word admin has now changed to admin. So you just got to compare that line, look at it, and see what the differences are. Okay, so then we say, okay, um, this is missing for they the my listing in the latest version of the, the the theme that they released and the parent theme they've added some lines of code um typically that's not going to break things but if they um if they are removing code and you've still got some old code in there it could cause a conflict you just got to kind of go like we're doing here just compare them side by side see what's happening are they removing stuff adding stuff changing the name of stuff uh, and kind of stay on top of it and if you get to this point and you can take screenshots and, and whatever, or do a video like I'm doing for um, the help desk or whoever's supporting you and say, hey, I'm noticing these difference. Um, what do I need to do here? Because um, a lot of times with, well, actually, uh, as much as I hate to say it, I, I think 99% of the time, um, my listing, when they release a theme update, they don't tell you this stuff. 
um, unfortunately. I wish they did, but they don't. Um, that would help things at least at least give you an indication of which files to look at. They could just do a quick line. If you're watching this, my listing uh, team, it would be really helpful if you just set, took 10 seconds to say, we changed, we edited this theme file in this version. That would really help to help us know where to look and uh, support people. So anyway, I'll get off that soapbox. But anyway, you see the value I think here in comparing files um, and how you can quickly troubleshoot things that are going on with the theme. Um, or if you just really like to nerd out and you like to see how the theme changes, I mean, but they don't mention the file names that are changed. You'd have to go one by one. It's not really realistic, but if you really like to nerd out and really keep tabs on what keeps changing with every theme update, um, you would have to go through a lot of files. So if you look here, um, this is the latest version. Um, you could see you would have a lot of files to go through and check. Um, that sort of thing. You could probably go by, you couldn't go by dates, file dates on there. Um, anyway, that's getting a little off tangent there, but if you really want to nerd out, you could go through there. And there's probably an app too. Uh, actually, I know there is, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but there's something that where you can run file folders through and it'll tell you um, which have changed there as well. So that's, that's a way to go about it. Anyway, again, let's get off of this, uh, beating this to death. The next thing I wanted to talk about was um, finding and find and replace. So I'm going to close this down. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to close this down. Let's say um, like a starter site, for example. You know, let's just pretend like this is a CSS file. There's lots of CSS in there. Um, let's hypothetically say we wanted to change every, all of the occurrences of the word revision. Okay, let's pretend that was the color black, so zero, 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 and we wanted to change that to something else. So what you could do in here is go to um, edit, replace in files. So what we're gonna do is we, since I've already highlighted the word revision, Visual Studio Code automatically dumps that word in there for you, so that's really nice. They're telling you that there's 90, 93 instances of that word in here. So let's say we needed to change that word to revisions, okay? So let's do that. Uh, and then you click this little icon right here and it's gonna replace all of those instances. So click that, replace, boom. So there we see. Now if I do a search for revision, uh, we just quickly glance here and we see that um, there are no just there's no just revision. You know, obviously you're not gonna, you're probably not gonna do this, but um, you gotta be careful though too. Like if you see here in this example, revisions already had an S, so we've added another S. But again, the the idea here was just to show you that you can do a quick find and replace against everything uh, that you need to. Another really cool feature of that is, um, let's, let's do this for fun. Let's type rollback here. Let's put another one in here, rollback. Okay, you see how one has the uppercase R and one doesn't? So another cool thing you can do is type in rollback. So let's say we wanted to replace the word rollback. Um, what you can do is we could say, I only want to replace the lowercase version. You know, leave, leave this uppercase version right here alone. Okay, so then you can click on this icon right here cursor to come up here. There we go. Um, match case. So that's that, that's that icon right there. So we're saying by clicking that only replace the lowercase version of rollback. Okay. And we're going to replace the word rollback with goobers. Okay. Click replace all again. And it's saying that we're going to uh, replace four occurrences of the word, the lowercase word rollback with the word goobers. Okay, there we go. So Goobers is now um, here. Okay, but our uppercase rollback is left intact. Okay, so that's another really cool thing. Um, so the last thing uh, we'll go through here is, again, like I said, you can use this as just a, a regular, uh, your text editor. If you use FileZilla, um, like I've, I've talked about on a, a lot of videos, um, let me pull up a site here. 
So for example, this is FileZilla. If you wanna browse the file system of your website in, in a safe manner rather than editing files directly. So let's say you go here, I'm connected to this My Listing test site and I browse to WP content, to themes, uh, My Listing child theme. Um, so instead of editing the functions.php direct from within the website, for example, you could come here, right click on this and say view edit and because Visual Studio Code is set to my default text editor, you can do the editing right in here and it has the nice formatting and color coding and, and all of that so it's easier to read. Um, whereas compared to, let me pull this up. Whereas we compare it to, uh, let's see. Let's see if I can remember my login here and I'll show you the difference. Okay, so there's that. So again, let's recap. Um, so this is the safer way, going through uh, FileZilla, um, setting Visual Studio Code as your text editor. You can see it's, it looks really pretty, color-coded and all that. If we were to look at this from the WordPress side of things, so we go to Appearance and then uh, Theme Editor, and we go to the Functions file here, so Theme Functions. It is still color coded um, and it'll still work. So let's do a quick compare here. You can see the difference though. It's it's much easier um, on the eyes. And you can, again, you can use those extensions and settings what, and whatever to make this look appear however you want. If it's easier on your eyes or you just like a certain theme or whatever. When you're in here, you're just stuck with whatever they give you unless you use CSS or some other plugin to style, to style this, which is, probably a weight, colossal waste of time. But anyway, the main point here of over all of that that I just said is the safety. You should not edit directly in WordPress. If I go in here and I just, I get you know my dogs barking or whatever and I just like, I get distracted and I accidentally hit the keyboard and I type something funky in there and I were to go now and I was to, to save this file by clicking update file here, this could lock me out of the site um, it could cause your site to crash, which is not a good look to your users that are currently on your, your site. It's just much safer to go in through FileZilla. Again, that's another little side tangent, but it's, it's super important that it does tie into Visual Studio Code because you can edit your files um, with that editor, okay? Um, what else? There was something else I wanted to say. So we did find and replace, how to compare files, how to use it as your default text editor, how to use it with FileZilla. Oh yeah, that was it. So let me um, open this back up. There's all kinds, I mean, there's a million things you can do. Split screen, uh, you can change all kinds of views um, here. Just a million things you can do. But what I, another thing I wanted to cover here was the extensions. So here on the left, you see this extensions area. So let's go into there. One of the club's partners is WP Code or sorry, yeah, code WP. So they have an extension, for example. So you can install that and you can generate AI snippets, you know, right from here. So um, right from within Visual Studio Code, you generate your AI scripts, your snippets, and then you can right from here, copy and paste them into your website or however it is that you add your code. Uh, WP Code Box would be my recommendation, but um, it's really cool. So you don't even have to leave Visual Studio Code to work in Code WP, for example. Uh, really quickly, you know, we all use Elementor if we're using um, my listing websites. There are Elementor um, add-ons in here, extensions. Um, yeah, some for you to check out. Uh, I haven't checked for Woo WooCommerce. Maybe there's some WooCommerce ones in here. There we go. So some stuff in there. Um, looks like maybe something else here. Co-cart. Not sure what that is. But anyway, you just start punching in the different plugins that we use. Uh, let's just try WordPress. Yeah, there's a ton in here for WordPress. Um, yeah, there's a ton of stuff. So you can get snippets in here. Add some functionality to your website. Uh, here's some WooCommerce. Oh, that's the one we already looked at. 
Yeah, it looks like there's a ton in here. Wow. Okay, so you, you see the values. There's just a lot of really cool stuff you can do, and it's all for free. Um, some of the extensions maybe have a cost depending um, on what software is, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's all free. I haven't come across any that you have to pay for. Um, if you use OpenAI, maybe there's something in there for that as well. Yeah, it looks like it. A lot of OpenAI stuff. Uh, if you're using chat GPT and that sort of thing. Uh, what else? What else do we all have? We all have, we all have Elementor. We all have WooCommerce. Um, yeah, I don't know. You get the idea, but I think we've, we've covered enough in this video. I just, again, want to drive home free tool. It is, it is only as geeky as you want it, need it to be. Um, I don't get heavy into the code aspect of it. I use it to, uh, write CSS. Um, sometimes, most of the time I write CSS in WP code box. Um, um, but reverse engineering code, this is, um, to try to learn what, how people built a plugin, a snippet, that sort of thing. Um, working with extensions like code WP and what we're seeing here, comparing files, doing find it, find and replace is a massive one. And then the compare one is a massive one. Uh, massive features for me personally, but, uh, yeah, anyway, I hope this video was helpful and, um, yeah, I really, really hi I highly recommend this free tool. So hope all is well, please remember to click subscribe and I will catch you on the next video. See ya.